You're going to measure this piece, but then eventually it's going to end up that the opening in the frame is slightly smaller. However, this is going to change, and it'll make sense to you in a little bit, if you created a border, right? So you guys have heard me this semester saying, like, it's kind of a good thing to have a border. And the reason that it's a good thing is because then you can get the entire piece in, like the entire artwork in, without having to crop off some of it to see the picture because the paper itself is already larger and the opening can be smaller so it won't pop through, right? So if you have a border, there's a different rule. First I'm gonna show you how to do this and then I'll explain how to do it if you have a border, okay? So we are gonna assume that you do not have a border, okay? And if you do not have a border and you're measuring from edge to edge, you're gonna measure the length. So this one is it's a little bit off. It's pretty close to 15. And I can say pretty close because I know I'm gonna crop some off anyway. So I'm gonna write that down. You can either write it on the back side of the piece or if you have your mat board handy, you can write it on the back side of the mat board. Just be careful that you're using the back side because like when you're doing like a white mat, it's white on this side and it's white on this side. So the way that you know that it's the back side is you see this printed mark here, that's the back. Because if you cut the whole mat and then you put it up and it says 022515 on the front of your piece, it looks kind of dumb, right? So this is the back. So I could, I could, and this is why you need a whole big table, write it on the back side here that it's gonna be 15. And then the next, is to measure the length, and it's pretty close to 11. Really? I need your pencil. Thanks. 15 by 11, okay? So that's the size of the piece. Now, if I, Leslie, can you see what I'm doing right here? I don't believe you. I'm gonna draw a picture, can you see it, Jessica? If you can't see it, stand up for a minute so you can see it. Okay, so if I make this window opening 15 by 11, it's going to be too big and the piece is going to pop through. So now what I have to do is I am going to shave off a, a quarter of an inch from each side. Okay, so, so I'm going to show you two ways to do this. The first way is the more long, complicated way, but it's important that you understand what I'm doing, and then I'm going to show you a shortcut, because I like shortcuts, okay? So the first thing I have to do is I have to cut off a quarter inch from each side so that the mat, the opening of the actual mat just shaves, crops off that little bit, okay? Now, if I cut off a quarter of an inch here and a quarter of an inch here, a here we go, we'll see who's, who's on the ball this afternoon. What's well, a quarter of an inch plus a quarter of an inch? Uh, half an inch. Lewis is on the ball, okay? So it's a half an inch. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna subtract a half an inch or a half from both of these numbers. Okay, so what's 11 minus a half? 10 and a half. Lewis again, everybody. So 10 and a half. What is 15 minus a half? <laughs> what? Thank you, Raul got it. 14 and a half. Whew, it's because you've been testing, huh? You've been on it. Okay, so 14 and a half by 10 and a half is what I actually want the opening to be because I took a quarter of an inch off of here and I took a quarter of an inch off of here. From there, I am going to add the thickness of the mat board, okay? Now, the standard thickness, and this I'm gonna show you, this is for the scratch board, which is a little bit different. The standard thickness for the mat here that we use is two and a half inches. So, if I am going to then add from this to the outside, I have to add, this would be representing my 14 and a half by 10 and a half, right? I'm going to add two and a half plus two and a half to that. So what's two and a half plus two and a half? Jessica? I'll ask it again. What's two and a half 
plus two and a half. Five. Okay. So, um, so five. So I have to add on five to both of those to get the outside. So now I know what my inside measurement is, which is 14 and a half by 10 and a half. My outside is going to be 19 and a half by 15 and a half. Okay? So there was like some subtracting and then some adding and we ended up with this outside measurement. Okay? Now I'm going to measure that out on here and get and cut it so that outside is right and then I'll show you how to cut the inside. All right, you ready for the shortcut? Okay. So instead of subtracting a half an inch and then adding on five and a half, what you can do, in, or I'm adding on five, what you can do from the very beginning is take your original number, which was 15 by 11, and just add four and a half. Because that's putting this step and this step in, into one step. But the reason I wanted to show you why you get that number is so that you could see that that's how you get the inside number and then you add the two and a half to get that. So you can just add four and a half like this and you'll end up with the same amount. So this would be 15 and a half and this would be 19 and a half, which is the same thing as over here. Okay? It's just a quicker way to get to that answer. Now, before I do the cutting, Let's switch and I'll show you the difference if you're doing a piece that has a border. So if you're doing a piece that has a border, and for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm not going to pay attention to this little triangle piece. I'm just going to pretend that I want to frame the actual picture and we crop out all the white. If you do that, all you have to do is measure the actual part that you want to show through the window and then add five to that. You don't have to do the subtracting because you don't have to crop any off. So this would be fi like five and a half here, like 10 and a half here, and then I would just add five to that to get my outside measurements, and the window would be the exact same size as this picture, okay? But it won't pop through because I have this border. You with me? So there's yeah. different cases depending on whether you have a border or don't have a border. All right, so next. I said my measurements were 19 and a half by 15 and a half. Now, uh, back over here is where all the mat board is kept. Um, the bottom couple of shelves with the, um, the full sheets uh, are most commonly used, but they're rather cumbersome because they're so large. So if you can find a piece in the scraps that is big enough with your outside measurements, you can use that too, and then you don't need, maybe need quite as much space to work. So you may want to take your ruler back there, know what your measurements are, and see if you can find, because you can see like the top three. Come with me. Yeah. Okay. Um, the top three is like scraps, okay? So take one of those or take one of these, but one sheet of mat board like this is about $6. So you get one chance. So I'm going to show you how to double and triple measure so that you make sure you get it right. And I also don't want you to just measure a big old square in the middle and then throw the rest to scrap. When I do this, I'm going to decide how to be the most conservative with my mat board so that somebody else, I should be able to mat, you know, three, maybe four pictures on one piece of mat board. Okay, so my measurements were 19 and a half by 15 and a half. So if I do 19 and a half this way, and 15 and a half this way. You okay, Raul? Okay. <laughs> Get me out. My map, I'll have about this much here. Now, if I look at the leftover here, then I'll have like a significant amount left over, 16 and a half on this side. So that could be okay. But if I do it this way and I go 15 and a half, what did I say? 15 and a half by 19 and a half. Then I have plenty left over here, but a skinny little strip there. So that might get wasted. So I think I'm going to stick with the first way. So I kind of think about both directions before I actually make my marks and decide how much mat board I'm going to throw away. So it makes more sense. I think I could get more pieces out of this if I stuck with my original, which was that I did the 19 and a half this way. So that was this mark right here. Okay? So can you see again? I'm drawing on here again. You see? Okay. Just uh, this will be my one and only disclaimer. 
if you guys are not standing and you cannot see what I'm looking at and you ask me a question to help you later, I will not help you. Okay? Maybe you can find another friend in the classroom who will be nicer than me. I'm generally not a nice person. Okay, so 19 and a half. So what I did there was I made two marks at 19 and a half. I did a mark here at 19 and a half. Then I pull, pulled my ruler back. I made a second mark at 19 and a half. That reason I do that is because now I can connect those two dots and I can make a straight line. If you only make one mark, it is very easy to think that your ruler is straight and then look at it, it's cro slightly crooked, right? So I always suggest to, to make a mark in at least two places. And if you're really not sure, make marks in three or four places. You can do that and line them all up. So that's 15 and a half that way. I've got three marks. I'm gonna connect the dots like that. So now, this is going to be the piece that I need for mine, but you can see I can almost clearly get one, two, three more pieces, maybe not exactly the same size, maybe something that's slightly smaller, but all this stuff can go back into the scrap. So when you guys go back there, look for a piece of scrap to use before pulling out a full sheet, okay? All right, so the one and only other thing I'm going to show you here before I show you how to cut the mat is this and this is like a little hiccup in the plan which is is if you guys choose to um mat your scratch board as your piece that you're going to put in the show the one and only piece then i have a template right this you can use because and the reason i made a template is because there's a text box below because that was an illustration of a of a song or story something a poem right so you put the illustration here, you put the text box below, and you would have to print out the lyrics to put it in here. So you won't have to do as much math if you choose to mat this piece because the tracing will be done for you. But I will tell you that doesn't let you off the hook because there's this thing called the final exam, and I might just have some questions on how to mat on there, maybe. Okay? So you still, even if you do this, you still have to know how to do this. Okay? Okay. All right, um, I also have a template somewhere that goes landscape with the text box below. I just don't know where it is right now. I got time, okay? So if you decide to choose scratch board, you would set the template down. You would trace the outside, the inside, you know, and then you would cut that instead, okay? Okay, now I'm coming over here. going? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you will notice that the only thing I did here is I measured the outside measurements. I didn't do the inside. You could add two and a half, two and a half, two and a half, two and a half with the ruler. You could if you wanted to, but I've got a quicker way, okay? So I'm going to show you that in a second. The first thing I have to do is cut the outside, and to do that, you're going to use the cutter that's the straight cutter. Don't want to miss the joke. You will know it's the straight cutter because it says the straight cutter on the outside, right? And the razor blade on it goes down straight, okay? You'll see how the other one's different in a minute. That being said, this is a razor blade. Razor blades are sharp. Razor blades can cut you. So you, when you're using this, be careful of how you're setting it down and how you're picking it up. You pick it up like this, you might need a really big Band-Aid. When you set it down, you don't want to make a gouge in the table, so you always want to set it on the side. Also, if you set it down like this, it'll dull the blade and then you'll get a bad cut. If for some reason you're cutting and it's not making a good cut, the razor blade can be replaced by unscrewing this, taking the razor blade out. If the other side hasn't been used, you can just flip the razor blade. If both sides look dull, then we put masking tape around the razor blade so it won't cut anybody. We throw it in the garbage and then we, um, get a new razor blade in there, okay? So, I have to cut, again, I'm gonna think about how not to be wasteful with my mat board. I have to cut this. So if I cut it like this, I'll be left over with a scrap like this size and a scrap this size. If I cut it like this, I'll be left with a big scrap this way and a little scrap here. 
So maybe for this particular example, it doesn't matter so much, but sometimes it does matter which way you cut first and how much scrap you're left over with. So to cut it, I am going to lift the arm here and slide it underneath. And actually, while I'm here with the arm open, it doesn't matter too much yet, but I'm gonna double check and make sure that my mat cutter is set to two and a half inches. So right here, you can see there's a ruler. The, it is set to two and a half inches here. It usually stays on two and a half inches because that's the standard that we have decided to use. But you can mat it any size you want, right? So if people get better at matting and they want to do something called bottom weighting where the bottom is like five inches and the rest is two and a half feet, they might mess with this. So check it always and make sure that it's two and a half. If it's not, these little screws right here, I want to show you two fingers I'm using for this. Not my whole hand, just two fingers. I'm going to loosen it and then I can slide it to the measurement that I want. In your case, it should be two and a half. And then I can tighten it. Once again, two fingers. If you crank down on this, you're going to strip the screw and it, then this thing is always loose. So you tighten it just like that and that's enough, okay? All right, so now my mat cutter is set at two and a half inches <coughs> for future use and now I'm ready to cut the outside. So I like to, when I'm doing the outside cuts, take a piece of scrap and stick it, I should show that to the video camera, sorry. I, don't know, I think I just lost my Oscar for this performance. Okay, I like to take a piece of scrap and stick it here. It raises this piece up a little higher and it cuts cleaner. So if you're cutting and it's not cutting cleanly, get a piece of scrap and stick it in here for the outside cut. It, it just makes the cut go easy. Watch your faces. Big cut of some mat board coming through. Okay, so now I put it and I will tell you that this mat cutter has been slightly abused over time. This arm is not a perfect 90 degree angle as it should be. So I'm, I get close, as close as I can to that line that I made for the straight cut. Then I'm gonna push this down. The straight cutter has to be put on at the top. So you'll see that there's these um, grooves in the plastic and they fit right into the edge here so that the blade is actually attached here. So you wanna get that on the grooves above the piece. Make sure you're on the line. Hold this part down with your hand. Grab this with your other hand. Don't put your fingers like this because that'll cut your fingers off. Not really, but it's not that dangerous. But keep your hand back here. You could get a cut and pull straight back towards you. I always check to make sure I got all the way through before I lift the gate because if it's stuck and it doesn't pull apart, then I haven't moved it. So I can go back through, hook it again, and get that little piece off that I did. Okay, I should have put it straight before I did that, but, um, but, I, but I always test before I just lift because if you lift it and it's not pulling apart, then it's really hard to get it lined straight back up again, okay? So now this is a piece of scrap. I don't need it or I can give it to somebody else to use. And I gotta cut it this way. Slide it to the point where it lines up with the bar. I have to put my straight cutter even above this scrap piece that I have in there. Hold it down. Pull towards me. Test to make it sure I actually got it cut off. If I didn't, line it straight back up, cut again. But if I did, then I can take it out of there. So this is the piece I'm going to use that was extra, right? that I need this piece so much for the bevel cutter, so I'm gonna take it out now, this <coughs> extra scrap. But now I'm gonna do the inside. I gotta cut the window out of here. So for that, I'm gonna need the bevel cutter. Oh, sad. I grabbed the one that doesn't say bevel cutter, but it says pole style. But the other one does actually say bevel cutter. And you'll know that it's the bevel cutter because, Jonathan, can you see okay? You'll know that it's the bevel cutter 
because the blade is in an angle rather than going straight up and down. And also the blade is not engaged on the back side of this until I push on it and then the blade pops out. Okay? So th what this does is it cuts the inside window at a 45 degree angle so it looks fancy. Okay? So, I'm going to reassess which is the front and which is the back. Front. That looks a little off white. So this is the back. So I put it in so the back side is facing up. And I've already checked to make sure the mat cutter is set at two and a half inches. So now all I have to do is put the mat in so that it touches this bar, hold this down, make make a mark, and I know it's already two and a half inches. Okay, so that's the quicker way than using the ruler. It does the same thing. I'm going to do this. You really only need to do this on three sides, and as you get better at matting, you'll understand why. For right now, just do it on all four sides. Like this. So now I know this is going to be my inside window. I strongly urge you to check your work before you cut, because I said you only get one shot. So I take that piece and I put it on the window and I make sure that it's just a quarter of an inch smaller. So, and if it's not, then I can fix it still. So if I do this, you can see that each edge hangs over my line just about a quarter of an inch, so that's fine. And if I do it this way, and I can see that centered, it hangs over just about a quarter of an inch there too. So I feel like confident that this is the right size and I'm ready to cut now. So now I'm going to take the bevel cutter, put it back in here, take the bevel cutter, and there's a silver line on here. You see it? Okay. Um, there's a silver line on the bevel cutter, and I'm going to be using that silver line to line up with here. So it's got the same hooks on it. I hook it on the edge. This time the blade is not engaged until I, until I put down. So if I want to put it down in the middle instead of above, I can. And then I line my silver line up with this line that I made. And then I push down. That's where the blade is going to start cutting. Okay. Hold this down steady. Push down. You'll hear the blade kind of go through the mat. Pull towards you until I get that line lined up with the next line, lift the blade, lift the gate, turn it, and then you're going to do that on all four sides. Same thing here, line up that line, push down till the blade is engaged, pull towards me till I get to the next line, and all the way through. Now if you get a spot, I'll kind of do it a little bit on purpose on this one so you guys can see. Push down, pull towards me, and I'm going to get a little, I'm going to get it a little wrong. I'm not going to go quite to the line, and hopefully, I'm going to put this back in this box. Now hopefully, if I did it wrong, it gets a little stuck here, because I didn't quite pull it. Eh, I did it. I kind of got a little bit stuck. So your temptation is going to be to just pull it and rip it, if you get like a little piece of paper where it's stuck. But that can actually rip a chunk off of the mat, and it looks pretty bad. So rather than just pulling it and ripping it, use an X-Acto blade. Usually there's one in the box here. Um, but if there's not, I have that cup sitting on the table and use an X-Acto blade, now we took it out of the box, and actually hand cut it before pulling it off so that it doesn't look bad, okay? I didn't really do it, but you can kind of see like right here, that's what I'm talking about, it kind of pulls if you don't get a good cut. So now you see all these rough edges? Like I cut through this okay, those look kind of bad though. I might even want to change the blade before I cut again because it should cut a little bit cleaner, but if you get those rough edges, 
this piece doesn't matter because it's the backing piece, but on the, the actual mat itself, you can fix those by using a piece of sandpaper. So these little paddles here are sandpaper and you can just kind of gently sandpaper away any rough marks left from the razor. Um, you can, if this one looks dirty or it's not working, you can peel it off and use the next one or you can just peel it off and use it this way. The only thing I'm gonna warn you about is paper cuts on mat board really hurt because it's thick paper. And so if your finger slides off the, the paper and you slide it like this, I've done that so many times, it doesn't feel good. I'll tell you it doesn't feel good. So be careful of that. So I'm going to clean up my mat. If I have those rough edges with the sandpaper, if I have marks on the, uh, the paper like that, I can either use an eraser. And if it comes off with an eraser, great. I don't have, I got a big one over there, but. Um, but if it doesn't come off with the eraser, you can actually use the sandpaper like an eraser to remove some of those marks. You just have to be careful because if you go down too far, you're actually gonna hit the core. Like you can see how the core is kind of like an off-white. So if I go down too hard, it'll kind of look off-white and you don't want that. So you, if you do use the sandpaper as an eraser, go real gentle, okay? Okay, so now I've got this mat. And now I'm ready to put the piece in it. So you need this roll of tape here. Now, your artwork, sorry Ellen, um, your artwork will be on display for the art show for sure, but you might have noticed some other places around the school that we put the artwork up um, for display, and sometimes it's in the hallway. And if you guys have been a student here at West Leiden for at least one year, you know that they don't air condition the hallways. They're very hot, like hot and sticky in the summer. So tape is important because we don't want them to fall out of the mats. So you really want to almost look like you're overdoing it. First of all, tape it on the correct way. You almost want to like kind of overdo it with the tape. So the first thing I do is I take the masking tape and I just tack it in place to make sure I've got it in the right spot. So I'll just take a couple little pieces. Oh, I didn't really get that in the right spot. I need it over just a little bit. Like that. Put it like that, just to kind of hold it in place. And then I flip it over and I look at it and I decide if it's right. And look, it's not. It's still popping out of the frame here, so I want to move it over just a little bit more. So that would be a real pain in the butt if I used a bunch of tape so I always tack it and check first. So I want to move it over just a little. Tack it again. Flip it over. Look at it now. That looks much better. And now I'm ready to tape tape. So now I'm going to go a little bit nuts. Are you actually watching what you're taping, Artie? Yeah. You, you can? You can get a visual? Kind of. Sort of. Awesome. This is good. So I'm going to put you in my credits of okay. my film. Okay. I'm going to say... Anybody would like to comment? Like if you get, like, you remember that Blair Witch Project where you oh, like, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd be like, please contact Artie Gossel. No. <laughs> if you got sick while watching this movie. It's not that bad. Okay. I'm going to give out your home phone. No. <laughs> and your address. Okay. So I tape all the way around, all the way around with the masking tape. Okay, I don't want it to overhang, so I'll just do that. But I want it to go, like I want no spaces. I want the whole thing taped, okay? Got it, lots of tape. Then I'm gonna take the piece that I cut out of there and I tape that on the back. And the reason that that's really nice is because this paper is thin. So if it gets punched, now this is watercolor paper, so it's a little thicker, but especially like the drawing paper, if it gets punched from the back, it's like, you know, like when it's a football game and the whole team comes crashing through the, the paper sign, you wanna have some strength back here so it doesn't warp and it doesn't get ripped. So you're gonna take the backing before you tape it in place, especially if you end up matting somebody else's piece, you're gonna write their name. So this is Anna Garcia's. Thank you, Anna. She's in period three. So I took the information from back here, put the name on there. 
I want to make it so that people know which way to hang it. So if this is the direction I want it hung, I want the name to read, you know, up that way. So if this is the way I want it hung, I want the name like that. You can also do things like add arrows because you may not be the pe person to hang your own work. And if you go to your art show and your still life is hanging sideways, you're going to be like, what? Right? So you can help the per people hanging it to know which way is up. Then you're going to take the clear tape and you're going to do the same thing and tape all the way around it. I don't even, not going to work because nobody sees the back anyway. Then you're going to do a double check and make sure that you didn't get any schmutz on the front side. And if you need to erase or use sandpaper or whatever to clean up the front side. Punch that up a little bit. Then you can clean it. All right, so I kind of forgot. What's the date this is due for you guys again? 22nd. The 22nd for you guys. Yes, the 22nd. For that's 2016. People on YouTube, don't get excited. Okay? Sorry, I really kind of jacked up that last piece. Shh, don't tell anybody. Oh, I'm going to be fine. I'm going to be fine. The good news is nobody sees the back. Perfect. Okay? So then I flip it over. I make sure it's all nice and clean. I could probably do a little work, more work on that. And then it's 50 points, so you can turn that into me. Um, and, 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 and I need it by next week, Friday, which is the 22nd. And, 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 and last two things. Where do you find all the supplies? Okay. Mat cutter, this is really weird. I'm actually going to have you guys watch me put it away. Um, but it goes, like, I don't know if you've ever noticed it, right by the cutting board there, by the door. just kind of stands up on the side there. We just have, you have to be careful not to knock the arm and not make the arm hang out so it's going to knock somebody in the head. Um, the cardboard box full of mat cutters is in the cabinet. Um, Underneath the scissors, over there. Should I stop recording?